So this is a physical model off your kidney. Oh, what? So that's what your kidney feels like. Really? That's wow. And if you feel the tumor, it's quite hard. The only way that we can really predict the outcomes of our patients in complex surgeries is by rehearsal or practicing the surgery on a very realistic platform. And we have created that platform. They did a full body scan and they found that there was multiple tumors in both of my kidneys. Anthony has Van Hippel Lindau disease, which is a rare genetic disease that leads to multiple tumors in the body. He was originally referred to a major cancer center in New York City, where the expert that only does these surgeries had decided that they're gonna do it via a 10 centimeter incision in his flank. The pain actually started to go away two and a half months after surgery. I still now, almost a year later, have stinging feeling in my kidney area. Although it did cure his kidney, it did lead to some impedance of his recovery. When you make a 10 centimeter incision that involves removing a rib, you go through quite a few number of muscles and that leads to a significant amount of post-operative pain. It was tough having to uh, figure out ways to provide for my family because I wasn't able to work. And still, I'm only allowed to lift 25 pounds. After he had completely recovered and it was time to think of doing his left kidney that had five tumors, he then came to us. He heard about what we were doing with robot-assisted surgery, the fact that we make patient-specific models to rehearse the procedure, and he wanted to do this robotically. Robot-assisted surgery involves four to five one-centimeter incisions, it leads to less pain, it leads to faster post-operative recovery. Now that is the gold standard for one, maybe two tumors in the kidney, but definitely not five. Part of this is also looking at feasibility, not only predicting the outcomes, but really seeing if this is possible. People come to us with the most complex medical or surgical conditions. And how do we render these complexities simple? The kidney receives 20% of the blood supply in our bodies. So when we want to cut through it, we have to first stop the blood supply to the kidney, and the kidney can tolerate up to 30 minutes of ischemia time. In open surgery, you can cool down the kidney, use ice, you hibernate the kidney almost. So those 30 minutes then translate into two hours. Doing it that way with robotic surgery is almost impossible. And therefore, when he requested robotic surgery, we have to use something called warm ischemia, where when you clamp the blood supply to the kidney, when it's not cold, rather than the two hours I have with open surgery, that comes down to about 30 minutes. So it becomes very difficult. You're doing the surgery against the clock, five tumors that is almost impossible. We have 30 minutes that we can do this in which your kidney would not go into irreversible damage. So I need to strategize, do I need all these tumors to be clamped or not? It depends on 3D mold printing as well as polymer casting. So this is the patient's CAT scan. And what it is, is a series of images in the patient's body. Here we can see the kidney. This is the first large tumor starting to show up. There's a second one over here, third one there fourth one down here, and this is number five over here. And this allows us to have a full-on 3D representation of not only the patient's tumors and kidney, but also the surrounding vessels, which are very important in this procedure. We then use the 3D printer to create molds. So we create a negative mold, and you can see the impressions of the tumors on this side. And then we inject that mold with hydrogel that based on the concentration and certain processing replicates the consistency of the kidney tissue itself, then we end up with the kidney. So this is Anthony's kidney. It is a functional replica of the kidney itself. It feels like a kidney. It represents all the tumors. When I start cutting through this tumor, it will bleed as if it would bleed in the operation itself. The organs that we make are true exact replicas. Also made replicas of Anthony's abdominal wall and then took it down to the operating room and hooked up fake blood and was able to really redo the scenario several times. I want needle drivers in both hands. I started rehearsing using different game plans. This is one tumor here. I started deciding which type of tumors I'm gonna remove before I clamp the kidney or cut the blood supply to the kidney. That's pretty deep, this one. And that is based on how much they bleed. And the only way that you can really predict that that's gonna happen by trying it a couple of times. So it turns out two out of the five tumors could be removed off clamp and the rest needed to be done clamped. Ischemia time is 24 minutes. This is my last and actually my best rehearsal because I can show you exactly what I'm gonna do. They'll know where all the tumors are, they'll know how to get to them, and they'll know how to do it in a quick manner to where they can be in and out in 30 minutes. Okay, go for it. Okay, ischemia time started. 
This is unprecedented in surgery. This is considered translational research. Translating benchtop research and using imaging and making models and all the materials testing that went into it, leading to direct patient benefit. Ischemia time done. Ischemia time 23 minutes, 55 seconds. Everything went perfect. We got all five tumors out. The blood loss was a lot less than expected. I would say about 90% of his kidney remained. You're saving operative time, you're decreasing blood loss, you can potentially avoid complications, you're preventing the time in which you're trying to troubleshoot. All this is direct patient outcomes. They stay in the hospital a lot less, their blood loss is a lot less, their recovery period is quicker, and all this has been proven. We can create it so that we don't have to wait for the next time to be better at it. We can be better at it the first time because we can, we can simulate it, we can practice it. We strive to deliver the best outcome possible and that's through adequate rehearsal, adequate surgical planning, so we can get people back to their normal lives. Oh, recovery was so easy. A week after surgery, I was able to walk around. The last surgery I had, it took about a month and a half for me to be able to walk around with no pain. I was able to hold my son about two and a half weeks this time instead of two and a half months after, after surgery. That's amazing. It was a much easier recovery, and I was very happy with that.